Marvel collectors and action figure fans. It's the one and only Octopotamus coming to you with another video review. And I have not done this in a long time, but on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the new Masters of the Universe classics, Commander Karg, Rebel Leader He-Man, Dark Despot Skeletor, and God Skeletor, otherwise known as the William Stout Masters of the Universe movie collection. Now these have been out for a little while and I'm sure a ton of people already covered them and everybody raves about these figures. I'm probably going to be one of them as well because I am one of the very small percentage of people in the world that actually liked the Masters of the Universe film. Was it like He-Man from the cartoon? Absolutely not. But having gotten older and seen what, say, Michael Bay has done with the Transformers franchise, it's almost like the Masters of the Universe movie was a precursor to that. Kinda, sorta like what we remembered, but changed enough just to annoy the shit out of a whole bunch of fans. And while, yeah, a lot of people have already reviewed these, one thing that they always say is that we never thought we would get these. And that's absolutely true with me. I, I remember reading somewhere that, like, the director or something like that absolutely despised Mattel and would never give them the rights to do these characters. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong with that, but once Super 7 took over, then all those concerns kind of flew out the window. But these figures, and because I haven't taken a look at the Super 7 ones uh, since Super 7's been doing them, uh, is very much like those old Maddie Collector ones. So you do have the mailer. Uh, it's not white anymore. They changed that with the Maddie Collector ones, too. Uh, they switched to this ground, uh, brown one. Uh, but, oh, there's no tissue paper! No tissue paper! That's very disappointing. No tissue paper. Here is Commander Karg. And as you can see, it is on that very familiar Classics Blister card. You got the uh, the Castle Gray Skull motif going around there instead of like Maddie. It says Super 7 along the side. But pretty much everything else is the same. You got the uh, little air holes right there, which is cool to see. You got the little dimple. Now, Commander Karg is primarily just a repaint. I never picked up the original one, which was meant to look like the comic book, I think. Or I, I don't really remember. But you come around the back of the package, you've got a brand new read-up for them. I'm not going to read the whole thing. If you want to, you can do the usual and pause it right now and read it. But you got other figures that are uh, available, such as all the William Stout collection. And then, of course, some figures from their uh, Masters of the Universe Club Skull set, such as Mondulak, Roboto, Stratos, and then Katrina. And then gorgeous art here on the side of Commander Karg. Now, setting him off to the side, let's take a look next at the Rebel Leader He-Man. Let's get the mailer open and be disappointed that we don't get the tissue paper. There's no tissue paper. Makes me so sad. But again, same basic thing. But here we have the Rebel Leader He-Man based off of... Kind of, sort of, Dolph Lundgren, which, uh, if I remember correctly as well, uh, they didn't get the likeness rights for him, but it kind of, sort of looks like him. But same uh, basic kind of concept here with the uh, the blister card coming on the back. Here is his bio. You can go ahead and pause it if you want to read that. And then, of course, you got the same figures up here. And again, gorgeous art right here, including that really cool new looking power sword, which I know some people really did not like. Now, some of the stars of this movie really were kind of the bad guys in the film. Uh, a lot of people really didn't like the take on He-Man. Um, Man at Arms is pretty much the same. Tila was pretty much the same. Uh, they didn't like Gwildor. That was definitely something that I remember, although I really liked him. But another character that they loved was Skeletor. I can never say his last name right. It's like Frank Langella or something like that. But he actually really enjoyed doing the character of Skeletor. And he was definitely not that comedic sort of joke of a character that he was in the original cartoon series. This Skeletor really did kick ass. Packaging wise, again, very similar, obviously. The only thing that different is, is his name. Come around to the back. Here's his new bio. Go ahead and pause it right here. And one thing that I really like about what they're doing with this is working these characters into the general story that has been going on for years with the Masters of the Universe classics. I think they did a great, great job with that. And then finally, the kind of end battle Skeletor, God Skeletor, after he gets all the powers of Grayskull, after he harnesses everything from the cosmos, 
this is what he turned into. And again, this guy was over the top. He was extreme. He was gold and he was awesome. You have some reused parts here between the two figures, but done up in a, a gold cl uh, color. And then obviously you got a new head on there, which looks great. Uh, come around to the back. And again, you got the nice read up. And one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that this movie actually was one of the, uh, not first, I mean, they've done it throughout history, but in terms of a the after credit scene, if you watch all the way to the very end, everybody thinks that Skeletor is defeated. He's not. He comes up out of some water, having reverted back to his original look and says, I'll be back. Unfortunately, he never was. We never got a sequel uh, for this film. But for the packaging on these guys, that's about it. So without further ado, let's tear these guys out and see how cool they actually are. And here they are opened up and out of their packaging. And in knowing that I was gonna be getting these figures, I had watched other videos on them. And one thing that I constantly kept hearing was that the reviewer never expected that we would get these figures. That they've wanted them ever since they were a kid. And ultimately how much they love what we did get here. And I thought to myself, you know, I don't wanna say that stuff. But I have waited a long time for these figures. I never thought that we would get them. And they have turned out absolutely beautifully. Now, for the longest time, as I said, we didn't know that we were going to be getting these characters. Part of the agreement and a bit of a loophole was that they could only do figures that had previously had a vintage counterpart. So figures like Sarad, Blade, and Gwildor were possible. And as you can see, we did get them. But unfortunately, these characters were it in terms of a vintage figure release. These guys never had vintage toys. So again, that's why I say many of us never expected to get these. But here they are, and like I said, they are fantastic. Now, starting off first with Commander Karg, as I said, uh, we did get a version of him before. Uh, now, I, I, I should modify what I said, that the loophole was that they had to have a vintage toy. I think if they were uh, featured in a comic book also, that they also could get done, I guess. I, I'm not exactly sure the whole details. But we did get a very uh, unmovie looking version of him. He was very purplish and stuff. And, and I, I didn't mind it. I just didn't want to get it because to me, it didn't really look like him. Karg here was one of the new characters that was brought into the film. A lot of people complained because we didn't get Orko. You know, Battle Cat wasn't in it. Trap Jaw wasn't in it. Many faces. A lot of the characters that we really liked from the cartoon weren't there. And characters like Karg and Sarad were created just for this film. And that certainly bothered a lot of people, but I honestly didn't mind it. Uh, Figure-wise, he looks fantastic. Uh, the cape here looks really good. I love the different coloring and shading that they have on the back here. You can see it's got this red coloring, and then through the sort of folded in areas, you can see like some nice dark fade. That looks great. You got this upper section, which nicely recreates the uh, little fur thing that he had. Sculpt-wise, all of these are outstanding uh, coming in to take a closer look because the detail on these is mind-blowing first taking a look at that head sculpt absolutely spectacular the sculpt work the paint job all of it really is a wonderful recreation of that character in the film really nice detail with the hair you can see a couple different paint applications throughout it giving it a very layered and textured sort of look i mean really very well done. You can see his big ugly ass ears right there. And then taking a look at his armor, really nice gold and black detail. You got some extra color details right around here. Come down to look at the arms. You can see that primarily the bodies on these are all very much like many of the other Masters of the Universe classic figures. Not too much changes. I mean, there's new pieces, obviously, but in general, it's fairly similar. Uh, you can see really nice detail here in the uh, little lace skirt things. Uh, you got some little tools here on the side. You can see that uh, his one arm here is done up in a claw, which is fantastic because that's 
what he had in the movie. And you can see really nice detail with a couple extra paint details on the little buttons. And then you got that serrated sort of look on the hook itself. Really very nice. Uh, come down legs. All of those, uh, again, are going to look very similar. But the boots do look really good. Nice knee-high boots and everything. Really absolutely happy with this uh, he comes with a couple accessories number one is going to be his blaster uh, in the movie blasters were a big thing not so much sword fighting but blasters were always used uh, and you got a nice one right here i love how they have this little slit right here so that you can very easily slide that into his hand and bring it all the way down over kind of uh, his finger area so he holds it very nicely and then the other accessory that he comes with is uh, it kind of looks like one of the tools around his belt. I'm not exactly sure. I, I would have to go back and rewatch the movie uh, to, oh, a little drunk card, uh, to get a better idea of uh, exactly what this weapon is. I know that I've seen it in, like, uh, concept art, I want to say. So you do have this. Real nice detail with the gold coloring and then the blue handle and everything. Very, very nice on there. Moving on to He-Man himself. Uh, he comes with a couple accessories as well. He has a little tiny blade, which is almost kind of pointless because he cannot hold it in this hand. Uh, I mean, you can see the hole and let them watch. watch whoop, oh, there it goes. Yep, it's gone. And then you have this hand, which is meant for his uh, blaster that I guess you could, I mean, I don't know. Kind of, I, I don't even know how he can freaking hold this. I mean, I guess you could have it look like he's got it between his fingers. Maybe he's writing something with that. I have no freaking clue. Uh, but he comes with a couple other accessories. He's got this blade, which is gorgeous. This one does an amazing job of looking like that uh, original power sword. That is a nice touch. I don't know if that's the way it was in the film, but that right there is a really nice homage that even if it's not like that in the film, the fact that they did it like this for the figure, great, great job. You got a little holster right here. You slide that right down. Yeah. On this side is his gun. Like I said, guns were a big thing uh, in this movie. So here's his gun. It's a new sculpt. You got the finger uh, here that does stick out a little bit further so you can bring it down. He doesn't really hold this all that well either. Uh, it, it's a little... Kind of, you just kind of have to wedge it in there. I mean, he holds it, obviously, but you do have to use that finger to kind of uh, fit inside there. I mean, it, it's fairly loose inside there. Obviously, not a lot of uh, He-Man fans are going to be using that gun because they're going to be using this. Come around to the back. You can see that you got a little holster section right here. You got a little clip bit right up here that allows you to open this up. I have the power! Here is the movie version of the power sword. He literally only used it one time. Uh, well, he used the sword several times, but the whole I have the power, he, he did it one time when he was fighting Skeletor towards the end of the movie. Great detail on this as well. Zooming in, you can see you got what kind of look like serpents, maybe around uh, the bottom section. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, doesn't really have that look of the original power sword, but it still is really nice. Gorgeous paint detail on the blade itself. Really well done for that. And I love how, like I said, you do have this piece that you can slide it down and actually holster it right there. I mean, that is wonderful uh, the figure himself though is spectacularly good again let's come in to take a closer look now again uh, as i mentioned earlier i don't believe they actually got dolph lundgren's likeness rights so the sculpt while similar looking to dolph lundgren is a little bit different now he actually does come with two heads this is one this is the other um and neither of them really have that Dolph Lundgren look I think this one does a little bit more so this one I, I'm not even going to bother using uh, you can see that he's got a much more kind of squared off uh sort of look to it a little bit wider of a chin ultimately this is the best looking one I think but you know you can use this for uh, I don't know something whatever but again great paint detail the uh, the texturing and layering of the different hair strands really does give a great look 
Of course, you got the very long 80s look, the little swoop thing right there. Gorgeous detail on all of these. And you, you take a look at the shoulder bits here. Gorgeous sculpt, amazing dry brush and paint applications throughout it. I mean, it's plastic, but damn, that looks almost like it's metal. You come around, I mean, even like on this section, a real nice paint detail on that little bit right there. Something I would not expect to have a lot of detail, but that does. Then on the back here, you can see that all the straps come around and still have a nice sculpted amount of detail. Even when you look at the little holster section right here, really nice paint detail on that as well looking at the rest of the body gorgeous emblem here in the middle you can't really make out what it is but it still looks cool again nice detail with the little bicep straps uh those are actually like those are actually sculpted i want to say I, I i don't because this part here is just like painted um of sorts i don't think no, no, that is like a separate sculpted piece. I don't know how that works. Come down. Uh, the, obviously, this hand here doesn't have anything. This one has a gorgeous little bracelet sort of thing. I mean, that's really very nice. Look at the, the buckle sections down here. This arm doesn't like going up. Uh, gorgeous detail with the, the straps and buckles. Again, nice paint detail added on there. And then on the tip, same with this. Really nice silver detail highlighting all the different uh, ornate details of it and then you look at his boots in these also look absolutely spectacular again gorgeous paint application on it that just really makes the sculpted detail on these pop beautifully i mean like i said um the fact that it doesn't exactly look like Dolph Lundgren really does not bother me that much it, it I mean it does look like him but I mean it honestly if you didn't know you probably wouldn't have been able to tell but everything else about the figure really does help sell the authenticity of this as a recreation of that movie character up next is Skeletor. Now, this is one where people have had a little bit of issue with it. Uh, for his accessories, he does come with the Cosmic Key. Uh, now, this is a much more movie accurate and detailed look at it. We've got a couple. Uh, I've modified uh, most of these um, because they originally had like little handles that they could hold in their hand. I cut them off because I thought they looked stupid. Uh, and I don't remember what came with what. Uh, some were exclusives and stuff, but you can see that these are opened up. You got some nice chrome on here. Uh, you got just this red paint on that, but um, none of them really had that full-on movie look this absolutely does but the the different tuning forks they're all collapsed now we did a we did get a slightly well no this was you know i forgot even about that uh this one here again i have no idea where this one came from but these were the ones that i had uh previously now this is the only one that didn't have the weird handle thing but none of them uh, do as good of a job as this new one in terms of recreating the movie look. This is absolutely gorgeous. This is a prop replica that I wish I could get my hands on. This looks spectacular. Every single one of the keys down here has a nice gold paint added to it. Throughout the entire thing, you have this nice silver wash with this black detail throughout the whole thing. Even up here, you have several different paint applications. Some gold on the inside there, red and green, a lot of black color. Really does, again, nail that look. You got a little strap right here that uh, is a little bit softer, but I'm not going to mess with it too much because I don't want to damage that. But this, the best cosmic key that we've ever gotten. These other ones, I don't even need to display anymore because this thing is gorgeous now he also does come with the uh sword that he used uh in the movie you can see again gorgeous detail with the hilt you can see the little skull and bat wings and everything there you got a nice silver paint on there thing that sucks about this is unlike he-man who has a, a holster skeletor doesn't have one uh i really feel like he should and i don't know if there's any way um just kind of put that there i don't know if there's anything maybe i can put like a one of those like clear rubber bands there to hold it on um because he he really should have something that allows you to kind of holster this uh because he pulled that out 
and fought uh, He-Man towards the ba in, in battle. So I, I got to figure out something to do that. But uh, he also does come with his Havoc staff. Now you can see that there's two different Havoc stacks, staffs here. Uh, same sculpt, but this one I love the look of. Both have this really nice gold paint. That one is more gold, but you can see that this is like a black plastic with the gold paint on top of it with kind of a sloppy application to allow some of the black underneath it to kind of bleed through. I mean, again, absolutely gorgeous detail on this. Uh, one thing that's kind of weird is uh, this horn right here has a slightly off color gold than this, but I kind of dig that. But you can see what I was talking about, how like the uh, the plastic is black and then the, the gold is kind of put, put on top of it to give that depth, which really does look nice. Looking at the rest of the staff itself, it's uh, done up in this matte black plastic with a couple different gold trim pieces around the uh, the various bits, but absolutely love the way that this looks. Now, with Skeletor, uh, again, another slight complaint about him is that his body is fairly bulky. Uh, they utilize pretty much the uh, same buck and uh, arms and things like that, so he's going to have... A sort of bulky look. Skeletor the oh my god oh no I thought that was oh I almost got excited I saw that there I saw that and I thought that was for that and then I got disappointed um but Frank Langella uh, is kind of a, a skinny guy he did bulk up pretty substantially and he was very proud of his physique and uh, it, it was all pretty much covered up with with these robes and things of that nature so that is a, a slight inaccuracy of sorts but the figure still is really well done as well you can see that he's got this rubbery cape or hood around his head and then the cape itself is also rubbery now what's different is obviously you could see the uh, soft goods cape of he-man compared to the uh, rubbery one here uh, kind of wish that they went with at least this lower section being uh, something like that. That would have been really cool. Uh, you could have left the hood and this uh, little little back piece right here. I, I, I wish they could have figured out a way to give just this part, that, that soft goods treatment. That would have been nice. But it is a uh, pliable, rubbery plastic. You're just not going to be able to pose it or anything of that nature. But again, coming in to take a closer look. God, that's amazing. Uh, you can't really... Uh, take this off but you can see his eyes inside there if you can well, if it focuses there we go uh, you can see his eyes people complain about it because you could see his eyes and it's just supposed to be a empty socket mm, whatever but the fact that they actually uh, painted in uh, frank's eyes there is really cool but the skull itself looks fantastic you see again really nice paint applications giving some textural detail to the different sort of lines in his face that really does stand out nicely uh the armor again absolutely gorgeous it's got a very subtle gold paint application almost like a bronze on top of it some uh, red bits throughout there again the buck is pretty much the same i don't think you can remove the uh the body uh, you would probably have to do it here on the side but i don't think you can i, I know the old he-man figures you could remove that stuff but um i don't think you can with this gorgeous detail with the arms very uh, darth vader looking you got these straps coming down with great sculpted in detail throughout and then really nice added paint applications on it uh, you look at the belt section gorgeous as well kind of got that skull look with some gold and red and then you look at the little leg guards here again that uh, same detail that's on the straps is on here as well and it's all wonderfully painted as well come around to the back and you can kind of see even on the back here uh, the really nice gold paint or that bronze paint is added on there and then a nice red stripe on the back so i mean they they painted a lot of this uh, including the little tiny skulls right on his shin piece that's a really nice added touch just gorgeous super super gorgeous now during the uh, the climax skeletor finally gets the power of gray skull and he is imbued with the power of the cosmos and this is how he looks uh, now again the uh, havoc staff same thing just a, a different paint application on it uh, does kind of bother me this one bends a little bit I'm gonna have to heat that up and then bend that back but you can see it bends over but uh, same sculpt on that as well uh, you just got a much brighter gold paint again I, I really think that this one is the best looking one uh, now the bodies 
are the same between the two figures. Uh, not really much changes. You do get a little bit better detail in a better look, I should say, of uh, some of the sculpted in work because it's done in this bright plastic. But you can see that the, the cape is the same. It's just done in a uh, gold plastic. But the biggest difference is the head sculpt on it. The head is completely different. I don't know if you can pop it off and swap it. I'm not going to try. But this one has the, the hood. This one has the big giant. Uh, what I always thought looked like Castle Grayskull from the movie if you go back and look it kind of looks like it doesn't it tell me i'm wrong tell me i'm wrong definitely has that look uh, especially like down uh here and everything with the little bits then and then you got these little sections that come up yeah like this is where the uh, the opening for gray skull would be and then it has a lot of extra bits here but uh that a a is gorgeous you look at this i never uh, like a lot of this stuff i'd even notice but looks like bat wings Right there, th this dude kind of looks like Unicron. I do wish some uh, extra paint detail was added to this. Uh, you got a nice red dot right there. I know there was another one right up there. That would have been a nice little added touch, but you got his mouth there. Uh, I don't think, I mean, obviously, I think that this is a, a new sculpt, but I'm trying to look. Uh, it, it does kind of look like, it, well, if you look closely, it does kind of look like his mouth is open a little bit more on the God Skeletor. So that's, uh, that's cool to see. But the rest of the body is the exact same. It's just done in that really really uh, gold color, uh, like I said, uh, but you can totally see like with, oh, this is a little bit loose, so yeah, maybe you can move that around, I don't know, uh, but like down with uh, the rubber straps here and then these little bits here on the side, you can see that you do have that black color throughout it. So my guess is that uh, it's done in the black uh, plastic, just like the uh, the original one, uh, but it, it is painted over, so it gives you that depth as well, just absolutely incredible uh, really very nice all the figures have basically the same articulation uh, the heads are on ball joints so you can get those looking left right up and down the shoulders are on those pin hinge joints so they pin in and then that allows you to rotate them up and down and then hinge outward they all have upper bicep swivels one single joint at the elbow itself and then you have wrist or articulation moving forward back and in and out uh, i do wish that he-man had the uh uh like that uh, because now you're gonna have i have the power let's get his arm up here you gotta be careful with these just mitigate these little pieces around as best as you can uh, i mean you can kind of get it but I, I i do wish that um you could have them do more of an up and down pose with it and uh being able to bend that wrist like that would really help for that so that's one thing that kind of sucks uh they all do have the oh, oh my goodness hold on there we go do have the uh, upper torso waist rotation hips moving forward and back uh there is a little bit of a restriction in he-man here because of the the belt section rotation there you have a joint at the knee they also do have ball joints at the uh, the ankles themselves so all the articulation is pretty much there uh like i said uh, i do wish his was a little bit better just in the wrist um yeah i mean all of them yeah i see he's got the uh i thought that maybe that would kind of limit it uh the head here on karg is a little bit limited because of his hair but uh, using the hot toy method where you kind of lift up and then rotate around, um, you can still get it in different positions, which is pretty decent. Um, let's see, Skeletor, yeah, I mean, his head uh, is a little bit limited with the up and down. You do get the left and right, but because of the, uh, the hood itself, it doesn't go all the way to the left and right because you can see that's kind of sculpted in a way that makes it almost impossible. But uh, it is a softer material, so you can work it. A bit and then for god skeletor uh that one's probably the biggest uh articulation because obviously he-man's got the big uh 80s hair thing going on here so god skeletor doesn't really have that much so you get a, a nice range of motion with him and then the arms and everything uh, i guess the legs are a little bit kind of limited because of the skirt but really not even that much i mean that moves forward and back pretty decently and then again all the other articulation is there so the only thing that's really missing, uh, and it, it's only on He-Man, would be uh, that extra joint for the wrist. So, 
there's that. Now, I, I mean, I know I already brought them out, uh, but in terms of the comparisons, I'm going to get these guys standing here, and this is a great, great shot. Now, the thing that sucks is this is now the end of the line. There are a couple other figures that are re they're releasing as part of their uh, Castle Grayskull subscription thing. So Karg, He-Man, and then the two Skeletors are it. But when we got these three, we thought that was it. So maybe there's some way that they can bring us characters like Beastman or Evil Lynn. Hell, Tila and Man at Arms would be great additions as well. So like there's there's a total of four more figures that they could do. And then you would basically have the main cast. I, I, I don't care about getting Julie or Kevin. No, those guys can piss off. But in the battle of good versus evil, He-Man and Gwildor need more help to go up against all the bad guys. So, I mean, I, I highly doubt you guys have stuck around here for over a half an hour watching this video because it's not a Transformer video. If you have made it this far, hit that thumbs up button. It'll send a signal to me that you actually did watch it and maybe even enjoyed it. These are terrific figures. The Master of the Universe Classics line has gone on for a very long time and have done just about every figure possible in the franchise, including these ones that we never thought we would get. And as a fan of the Masters of the Universe film, these are ones that I always wanted. Sure, the movie wasn't that great, but for me, it was still fun. Is it what I wanted? No, but I was still able to find enjoyment in it. And getting these figures, most of them for the very first time, has absolutely put a smile on my face. Super 7 has done a tremendous job with the Masters figures since they've gotten a hold of the license. And I give them full credit. And all I can really think of to say is thank you. You fulfilled the wishes of a lot of us that did not get these as kids. So all that being said, if the new William Stout collection of Masters of the Universe figures are ones that you would like to add to your collection, they are available right now at Big Bad Toy Store. For that, I'll put a link right down in the video description where you'll go to BBTS and you can check out availability on these guys as well as the rest of the wide range of Masters of the Universe figures. But beyond that guys, that's about it. Remember, if you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you would do one small thing for me. And that's simply just to hit that thumbs up button. That one very small gesture really does go a long way towards helping me out, and I would really appreciate it. Also, I want to send a huge shout out to all of my patrons, who through your continued support, now more than ever, help to make reviews like this possible. And finally, remember, the real trouble with the world is that too many people grow up. Thank you for watching and taking the time to be a kid.